to pull yourself out of the one path you've chosen, you need to have an open mind. And that does take some creativity. It takes some ability to think in a different perspective than you otherwise had. Hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing world changers in the creative, social impact, and vegan spaces. If you like what you hear on this episode, you're going to want to check out the bonus mini episode that you can access if you DM me at Isolde T on Instagram and you let me know you want it. You'll get access to bonus episodes, new art, my latest writing, and other fun benefits. And now, let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thanks so much for being here. I am talking to you today about techniques you might use to spark your own creative thinking, to spark your own creativity. I've been on a lot of podcasts recently and been a guest on these podcasts, and people have asked me about our own unique creative genius. And you know, if you listen to me for any length of time, that I believe everybody has their own specific, unique creative genius inside them. And that the key for us is to figure out what that is and then utilize it to live a juicy, fulfilled, and sizzling kind of life. That is key. But what about day to day? What about day to day when you want to just spark a little bit of creative thinking? What are some techniques you can employ? And I'm going to go down the list of a few and I'm going to sort of pepper these episodes in over the next few days or weeks just so that we can discuss them all at length. First and foremost, if I were going to want to spark my creativity, what kind of thing would I want to do? Well, first of all, why? Why would we want to spark creative thinking to begin with? You might need to generate ideas. You might need to build your problem solving skills. You might need to solve a particular problem in a unique way. You also might need to build awareness or perhaps a way of, of having your mind be more open to possibilities than you otherwise know. That's a big thing, right? Keeping an open mind is actually a creative skill because often we get sort of set in one direction, in one path, and that's all we do. And to pull yourself out of the one path you've chosen, you need to have an open mind. And that does take some creativity. It takes some uh, ability to think in a different perspective than you otherwise had. So these are all things that you might want to use, whether it's in your private life or in your business, in your work. If you need to be open minded, charging up some of those creative skills is only going to be help you is, <laughs> is only going to be able to help you. My brain. Hold on. Let me say that again. If you need to be open minded or you need to solve problems uniquely and creatively, building some of these creative skills that I'm about to talk about and the abilities that are associated with them will only be helpful to you in the way you do your work, whether or not you're a business owner or whether or not you work for someone else. Having that ability to think from a different perspective is going to help you excel at whatever it is you're trying to do. And that's something that's really important and crucial that we think about. So let me talk a few techniques that I would like to suggest if you want to up your level of creativity or creative thinking. First one is brainstorming. What is it? What is brainstorming? Well, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pr pretty common technique for generating thoughts and ideas for coming up with potential solutions. All you do is you give yourself a little bit of time. I, I like to use about five minutes and I give myself a goal of 30 items, right? So if I, for example, want to come up with a title for a podcast episode, what I'll do is I'll go five minute timer and then I'll write down 30 possible titles for the episode. And they can be as wacky and as out there as I please for, for that five minute time frame. And right about 17 to 19 is when the magic happens. After 19, your brain kind of goes, and I'm done. But about number 17, 18 or 19, that is a really good sort of place to look for that, for that pinpoint of the cool title or the cool idea. But you want to do it in a fun way, right? I do it on my computer because I type faster than I handwrite, but you might want to take some crayons or some colored pencils 
and just, you know, make put, get a big piece of paper out and write the ideas down. Anything that comes to you in that five minute time frame, go for it. And you can do the same thing if you're in a group of people. You can do the exact same thing. If you're trying to come up with a problem uh, solver, then that is a really good way of doing it. Let me just blurt out all the possible whacked out ideas that could solve this problem and see what kind of stuff you come up with. Again, if you if you time it, don't, don't make it open-ended. Don't go, oh, I'm just going to start thinking of stuff. No, give yourself time. That constraint provides kind of a crucible and it will let you really, really, really get into the heart of the matter pretty quickly. The next technique that I want to talk about is the opposite, right? You can call it opposite of brainstorming or negative brainstorming or counter brainstorming, but it's when you try to come up with a solution to a problem that you know would be a crappy, terrible solution, right? You need to come up with what would never work to solve this problem, right? If you have if you have a goal, if you have a thing where you want to get, uh, for me, I'll say, I want to get a thousand new listeners to my podcast. What would be some terrible ways to get new listeners? Well, I could insult people. I could sit here behind my microphone and just wreck and 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 I could also do a terrible job of interviewing. I could ask people questions like, oh, I don't know. If I'm talking to an innovator, I could ask them questions like, is innovation good? <laughs> okay. You know, so, so th these are terrible ideas, right? I want to come up with the worst possible ideas. And once I know what the worst possible ideas are, then I can actually go ahead and figure out some possibilities that would be the opposite of that, right? So if I want to uh, gain a thousand new people subscribe to my podcast, for example, and I say that asking terrible questions is a negative brainstorming solution. Well, asking good questions is the opposite of that. So taking the opposite of those terrible solutions and seeing what you can do with them. And frankly, I have to say that if you're working on this with a group, other people are going to have terrible ideas too. And then together you can come up with what are their opposites? What are the ways we can use these terrible ideas to turn them around and make them focused on something that's positive. The other thing that you can do is you can uh, use a random word, right? You can ju it, uh, just choose a random word that will uh, relate somehow to the problem you're trying to solve. So for example, if I say, okay, my, again, going back to this notion of, oh, no, you know what? I'm going to use writing. Writing is a good thing. Writing. I am trying to figure out how to market my mystery that's coming out, my mystery novel that's coming out later this summer. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Well, uh, in the negative brainstorming thing, it would be, don't tell anybody about Die by the Sword. Tell no one. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't say anything about it. Stay very quiet about it. That's a negative brainstorm. But a random word might be, Let's see. Uh, you know what? I'm going to actually literally go to the random word generator right now on my computer and I'm going to ask it to give me a random word because it'll be truly random. And the random word is uncle. Great. So how could I relate uncle to trying to market my book? Well, I can check with anybody I know who is in my friends list or on social media and go, hey, does anyone have an uncle or even an aunt who might work in marketing or who might know someone in the publishing industry. That's a way of coming up with ideas or uncle as in I give, I give. So what are the ways that I can use that as a strategy of giving, of giving up, frankly? Okay, I'm going to give up trying to uh, get this published traditionally through one of the big five publishers, for example. Instead, I'm going to go my own way like I have with all my other books and do independent publishing, right? In fact, I'm going to start my own publishing company. Creative Earthlings Publishing is coming at you soon. So there we go, right? There, There's a way that a random word can relate to what I'm already trying to solve. Or you can go backwards and you can trace the seemingly unrelated word to what you're trying to achieve and start with the word itself and then work your way backward to the problem. You can also, if you're working with other people, 
play Yes And. Yes And, they say it comes from improv theater, but I will say it can also be traced back to clown and clowning and improvisation also. And what does Yes And mean? It means when there are two people in a scene and if someone makes an offer by saying something or doing something, the other person does not negate it. Instead, they go, yes, and then they complete the story or then they make the story go forward. So let's say I was working with someone and I said, today, I'm going to cook broccoli on the moon. And the person who's my partner would not go, you can't cook broccoli on the moon. There's no electricity. That's not playing yes and. If they were playing yes and, they take what I've offered. I'm going to cook broccoli on the moon. And they add something. They go, yes. And I've decided that I'm going to bring carrots and cauliflower. And then we can have a feast while watching the lunar eclipse. I don't know. <laughs> something, right? And and then that the first person would go, yes, I love cauliflower and carrots. Let's do and then further the story. And that's what Yes And does for you. It gives you the opportunity to build on ideas. And you can do that in improv. You can also do it when you're trying to solve a problem. You can write down the Yes And solutions as you go. And that opens you up to heretofore unheard of possibilities. That's the whole point of creative thinking, right? Is that lets you think of things in a new way and in a unique way. And once you're in that space, that opens you up to thinking even more in unique ways. Another way that you can do it in addition to word prompts, you can choose photo prompts. And when I when I teach my writing classes, for example, one of the things that I'll do is I'll give them a word prompt and say, hey, go ahead and write something in incorporating this word prompt. And in fact, I'm going to give you one. Let's go back to my random word generator and I'm going to choose another word and the word is recycle. So write me a story. And if you want to leave me a voicemail and read the story to me, the, the speak pipe little thing that says, leave me a voicemail is going to be in the show notes. I'd love to hear from you if you come up with a story with recycle. And in fact, I might write one and put it in the show notes just so that you can see my little story. And the key for this is that it is a, a word that is random. So it's seemingly not at all related to I'm going to take a picture of that just so that I can say, yes, it was recycled. I'm going to put that in the show notes. So I give them a word like recycle or some other prompt word and say, hey, write me a story around it, which I think is great. But you can also do it from a prompt picture. And my prompt picture that I do is a whole bunch of kids hanging out, sort of kneeling around my my wonderful dog, Hatha, who was a Siberian Husky. And it, the kids, one of the kids is looking up in the sky with just such wonder. And the others are all petting the dog. And I say, write me a story about what's happening here. And everybody has a different story, right? That just happens to be the picture I use. But if you take a random photograph and you go, what do I see in this? What do I understand from this? What is this making me think and feel? It will give you ideas. And then once you have some of those ideas about what you feel and what you think, try and relate them to the problem you're trying to solve to that you started the creative process to begin with, right? So these are all possible techniques. I'm going to talk to you more about other techniques in come upcoming episodes, but I wanted to get you started that if you're trying to solve a problem, if you're trying to come up with a creative solution, using something like brainstorming or negative brainstorming or word prompts or photo prompts or that that fabulous yes and exercise will be amazing to opening your mind, building your awareness and really instilling in you the fact that you do have creativity inside you and you can use those creative skills to really make something wonderful and to come up with incredible, unusual and unique solutions to whatever problems you're trying to solve. Alrighty, I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. As I said, I'm going to have more to talk to you about with it when it comes to techniques for sparking creativity in future episodes. But I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have questions, if you have thoughts about other ways to spark your creativity, drop me a line, leave me a voicemail. I would love to hear from you. Until next time. Oh, yes, I wanted to say this, actually. I, I really do need to be telling people this. I do coaching on sparking your inner artist, on sparking these creative problem-solving skills so that you can improve both your personal and your professional life. If you would like to book a discovery call with me so I can get to know you a little bit better and we can talk about it, there is a little link in the show notes. Book that discovery call. It's 
it's free for you. It's complimentary. It's 15 minutes to chat to see where we are and to see if we might want to work together to help you get where you want to go. So that link is also there. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Be kind.